Ke hono rea he kroria he mai ngā unu ki te matoku whenua he whakaro koe ki ngā tānata katoa. Tēnei katika me te kumihi ki Taranaki Whānui, ki Atiawa, ki te upoko o tika, koutou e mana ki tēnei peka o tōta tēnei motu. He oi anō ki a koutou katoa i rarau mai, mai ngā tōpito e whā o Aotearoa a noa he treiria nau mai hara mai. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you, David. Thank you very much to everyone who's here at the summit and to our speakers who have come from afar uh, to join in a really important conversation. I'd like to take, take this opportunity uh, to thank local government New Zealand, Water New Zealand and the Institute of Public Works Enge Engineering Australasia for organising the event. It's a really important time and juncture in the conversation around the water space and all the issues. Our government sees the three water system as crucial for the health, well-being and prosperity of our communities. However, the system faces some significant challenges. Over the next two days, speakers will talk about these challenges in detail. The Honourable Lynn Stevens, QC, will talk about uh, the findings of the Havelock North Inquiry. Helen Wynn and Malcolm Alexander will talk about funding challenges and we'll get some insight from experiences overseas. We'll also hear about possible solutions. Marcus Rink will talk about the United Kingdom's arrangements for regulation. We'll hear from a number of speakers about different models for service delivery, from Wellington Water to Watercare to the Tasmanian experience from Mike Brewster. I want to thank our overseas guests in particular for coming here and sharing their expertise. We have much to gain by looking further afield and how they've met some of these challenges that we are now discussing. In working towards solutions, what is clear is that this is a conversation we need to have together. Neither central nor local government can address these issues alone. The conversation we will have over the next two days is essential to the journey we are about to take. If we engage in the right conversation with a strategic view in mind, we may just reach our destination in good order. So what are the key challenges? The three waters system as a whole is one of New Zealand's critical sectors. It provides fundamental building blocks for our communities, towns and cities. We all need high quality, reliable drinking water and wastewater services. Our towns, roads and public spaces are not livable without stormwater services. Our environment depends upon water's infrastructure, services, particularly our streams, rivers, beaches, and future-proofing those services. When we think about the treatment of wastewater and stormwater, then we know that we've got more to do. The challenges facing drinking water, the environmental challenges, and the need to move to a new regulatory system are significant, which is why we're here today. The findings of the Havelock North Inquiry have been a sobering reminder of how, for the sake of our communities, we must make sure that drinking water services are high quality, safe and reliable. The drinking water in our cities is by and large world class. However, too many areas in New Zealand do not meet drinking water standards. And as our communities get smaller, the level of compliance drops to around about 25%. The inquiry has made significant recommendations, both to overhaul regulation and also to change how services are provided. This is, as I said previously, an important conversation that we must have together. We need a step change to minimise the risk of a repeat of the tragic outcome of Havelock Hav North happening again. DIA has commissioned a report from Becker on the cost to upgrade drinking water infrastructure and to meet key recommendations made by the inquiry. This report is available on the Three Waters website. Helen Wynne from the department is going to speak about Becker's report in more detail. What I would like to emphasise to you now is that this report shows that the costs are highest for our smallest communities. Our small towns and provincial areas have fallen behind in some areas, more so than others, and the cost of upgrading their drinking water infrastructure will effectively be unaffordable for many. It is clear from this work that the small communities cannot do it alone. 
But it's also clear that three water services are facing significant environmental challenges in many areas across the country. The Ministry for the Environment's report, Our Fresh Water 2017, shows that in urban areas, fresh water quality is significantly worse, both for E. coli and nitrate concentrations than in rural farming areas. The reasons are closely linked with wastewater and stormwater systems. Many wastewater and stormwater networks were built decades ago and have a very long-term resource consents. These are legacy issues which we are now having to deal with as those consents come up for renewal. Councils have just finished consulting with their communities about their long-term plans. Many are considering how to fund infrastructure upgrades to meet freshwater objectives under the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management. Many are considering how to meet community expectations about wastewater overflows into streams or at beaches. These challenges are everywhere, in our cities, towns and rural areas. In Auckland, for example, the Council has consulted on a targeted rate in its long-term plan to fund water infrastructure to clean up the city's harbours and beaches. It will not be possible to improve freshwater quality, particularly in urban areas, without tackling water's infrastructure. There are also significant challenges in the regulation of the three waters that we need to consider also. The Havelock North Inquiry has called for significant reform of drinking water regulation. This includes a move to the dedicated drinking water regulator and much better monitoring, reporting, compliance and enforcement. The inquiry has said that affordability should no longer be a reason for failing to meet drinking water standards. The Three Waters Review that was led by DIA has found that regulation across the Three Waters system is inconsistent and patchy. There are low levels of compliance, monitoring and enforcement across the system, particularly for environmental monitoring. There is inadequate oversight and connections between key parts of the system. Information about water services, the three water services, is often not transparent and does not promote accountability or improvement. Many con consumers have to dig deep into annual reports to find out what is happening in their own area. We need to have a conversation about what a new regulatory <coughs> system might look like. <coughs> Changes to regulation, whether they involve better reporting, oversight, compliance or transparency, have the potential to have significant funding implications for local government, which is largely responsible for the three water services. So why is it important to address these challenges? As a country, we're facing some tough questions relating to three water services. For example, how do we achieve our housing aspirations and meet the increasing demand for water infrastructure driven by urban growth? How can we ensure communities and visitors everywhere have access to safe and high quality, reliable drinking water? How can communities with small or declining rating bases fund renewals of aged infrastructure? Or cope with the pressure placed on water services by tourists? How can we meet community expectations and improve environmental outcomes, particularly for the quality of our fresh water and beaches? How can we ensure that wastewater and stormwater is properly treated? How do we respond to climate change? These are all questions that we need to answer. Many councils have been investing heavily in their water's infrastructure and deserve to be recognised for that work. However, the challenges we are facing as a nation are too great for individual councils, communities or the government to tackle alone. So what can we do? The biggest question is whether we're brave enough to move away from the status quo and be open to do things differently for the good of the country and all of our communities. The problems are system-wide. The solutions will require system-wide collaborative change. <coughs> Central government and local government, water stakeholders, EWI, will need to work together to find solutions that are appropriate for communities everywhere. We will also need to consider how our larger urban populations can help smaller towns and provincial areas and how to spread resources, expertise and technology across the country. On the issue of regulation and service delivery, we need to look both at regulation and service delivery arrangements. 
If we're going to achieve a system-wide improvement, just targeting one side of the ledger will not be enough. For regulation, we'll be looking at options that improve public health, environment and economic regulation for each of the three waters. We are looking at overseas uh, examples and what has worked there. The solutions will, however, need to work for New Zealand. We can learn from other countries, as, uh, as I've said previously. Comparative examples are great, but our solution must be founded in our own context. For service delivery, we'll be focusing on two key areas, capability and funding. In the area of capability, we'll be looking at ways to lift capability and capacity everywhere. This is one of the biggest challenges facing our country. One of the key findings of the Three Waters Review was that many communities are struggling to attract and retain the highly specialist technical skills necessary to run infrastructure and manage assets. And it's variable across countries according to size. Here we're talking about people, the drinking water assessors, the council staff, the engineers and others who work on the ground throughout New Zealand. Many of you are here today. You're our most valuable asset when it comes to talking about implementation and I want to acknowledge that. We want to foster your specialist technical skills and find ways to deliver your career path so that you have security, collegiality and progression in the work that you do. New Zealand is a small country and water infrastructure skills and technology need to be nurtured and rewarded further. In the funding area, we'll be looking at options to meet the significant funding challenges that were mentioned previously that exist across the system. The infrastructure upgrades that are required are significant. In their 2015 long-term plans, local authorities had planned to spend approximately 12.8 billion of capital on three waters infrastructure. We also need to face the reality that these funding challenges are a feature of the three waters system. Climate change and population growth alone mean that even if we address the challenges in front of us right now, significant funding pressures will continue to arise for decades to come. The key to success here will be to deliver a sustainable funding model. We need to move away uh, of funding through water services that gives all of New Zealand a world class system both now and in the years to come. The Havelock North Inquiry recomm recommended aggregated, dedicated water providers, and this is something we're exploring. This would be one way to lift capability and provide a more sustainable funding model, and it has been something that many overseas countries have adopted with very good results. There are no predetermined solutions, however. There are a range of different options within this proposal and we want to have an open conversation and engage you about how a solution like this might work. There are some bottom lines for the government that I want to be very clear about. All options will ensure continued public ownership of existing infrastructure assets. We also need to investigate a full range of ways that we can ensure that local authorities and communities continue to be involved in whatever model we choose. I'd like to hear from local government in particular about this matter. A critical part of successful change will be determining how local government continues to be involved in the governance of water assets and what the links are with broader council planning. We also need to have an open discussion about how communities continue to be involved in services in their area. A responsible, responsive local service delivery will also be, I'm sure, a key part of success. I recognise that many councils will be concerned about what might happen if they have less of a role in water service delivery. We need to start thinking about what they might do instead. Again, I want us to be talking openly about this over the coming months. So what next? We'll continue to work closely with the sector. I've already met with National Council of Local Government New Zealand and had a very productive session. And as the comments have been made previously, this is a wide-ranging conversation out in the front. There will be many more opportunities for engagement over the coming months. I want to thank the sector for taking up 
this leadership opportunity. Central government, local government, the water industry, every, everybody all need to provide leadership in this area. We have a real opportunity before us with the right conversations and the willingness to work together, we have the potential to achieve solutions that will be long-lasting, future-proofed and benefit our communities <coughs> and the country as a whole. We've set up a, re a reference group with LGNZ that will meet for the first time in a few weeks and then regularly after this. Water New Zealand have been working with DIA in a highly productive way and I want to thank all levels of Water New Zealand for that. There will also be engagement with Ewe and Māori over the coming months as Tangata Whenua have a strong interest in fresh water and in this area. For central government, I've convened a large group of ministers with a broad range of interests in water infrastructure to help lead this work. <coughs> These ministers are all invested in this work program and you need to be assured of that. Many of the government's priorities are dependent on a well-functioning free water system. So in terms of timing, I want to emphasise that we're still at the conceptual policy stage. There are no predetermined solutions and lots of work still needs to happen to identify <coughs> and develop options. But as they say, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, the next best time is now. This is big thinking with some specific actions that must happen. Ministers are due to report back to Cabinet later this year on high level options. The decisions may be hard ones, they probably will, but we will work openly and transparently as we make them because this is too big a conversation to leave to chance and to politicise for the wrong outcome. Following these decisions, there will be further opportunities for engagement as we begin to work on the detail. Thank you once again for, for enabling me to participate in this summit. I'm happy uh, to be able to listen uh, to the presentations that follow, and I'm also happy to take some questions. Thank you.